Welcome to Getting Good at Godot Part 6, the most elastic Godot tutorial on the internet. In this tutorial, we're going to deal with intersections and signals. I'm sorry to let you down, but we're going to have to put off instancing until Part 7, since it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I hope you'll find it in your heart to forgive me for what is quite clearly the most egregious form of deceit. So in Part 5, I'm sure you remember, we briefly covered hard collision. This is where each physics body just kind of smacks into the other ones. This time we're going to deal with intersections. Sadly, physics bodies like the ones we've been dealing with, such as, you know, kinematic body 2D or rigid body, uh, they can't deal with uh, intersections very well. In order to properly deal with intersections, we're going to have to use a new kind of node uh, called an area 2D. So I'm going to create a new area 2D node uh, right here. You can search it. This is the area 2D. I'm going to give it a sprite, and I'm going to give it a collision shape. Oh god, I'm so sorry. There we go. So for the sprite, let's load the, the old classic icon here. For collision shape, let's do a rectangle, as usual. Okay. So I'm going to name this, uh, uh, let's name it collectible. And then, uh, oh yeah, here's a here's a tip. Um, use use the move mode. Press W. Select mode will select the collision body or the sprite here. You need to use move mode in order to uh, move the uh, kinematic body as a whole. Okay. So, you might have noticed that down here in the in in inspector tab area, that was a horrible delivery of that sentence. I am so sorry. You might have noticed that in the Inspector tab area, there's another tab beside it named Node. Make sure that you've selected your Area 2D. Let's look over here. And now there's a bunch of technical stuff. So, these are signals. And basically, a signal is emitted every time the associated thing happens. Um, and when a signal is emitted, the functions that you've connected it to um, will be called. So, I'll go into this uh, more clearly now. Uh, let's first of all let's do the body enter signal and what this does uh, it emits this signal every time a, a, bo a physics body such as a kinematic uh, kinematic body 2D uh, enters an area 2D and uh, yeah okay so we can press connect and you'll see here it opens this dialog so down here there's all our all our nodes from over here which we can connect to don't worry about this stuff too much I'll probably cover it later. And of course we get the path to the node that we've selected. We've selected uh, our node um, here, so it's just dot dot. And if we select player, dot dot slash player. Uh, you might notice method in node, and this is actually what the function is going to be called, because when we press connect, it'll define a function inside the script that is attached to the player node. Um, in fact, you can see that if there isn't a script attached, it'll just say method not found or attach a script to the target node. Uh, so let's let's go back to this. Select player, press connect. And, um, okay, so we can see here, made an empty function. And it passes this argument body. And what body is, body is the object um, which uh, intersected with the area 2D. And we'll we'll probably make more use of that later on, but for now, let's do something that's you know super obvious that we can uh, we can really see here. So let's do speed equals speed times two. So whenever we enter the this area two D, it should double our speed um, since it's ent doing the signal. The signal calls the function, etc. So let's just uh, make sure this works. There it does. Do it again. And again. And quite quickly this gets sort of out of control, but... Yeah, I guess this is totally out of control now. Um, so, yeah, there we go. This works. That's good. The only problem is that with this extra speed we get, it's pretty difficult to enjoy it with a big wall in the way. So, when we touch this area 2D, uh, I'm going to delete the wall. And this is pretty easy, considering there's a function called getNode. 
and what get node does, it lets us um, grab the object that we're referring to and then call any methods on it. Uh, so let's just do, I'll type this out then I'll explain it. So we can do get node uh, attic body 2d dot q3. Okay. So don't be too intimidated because there's a two new function sort of that I've just introduced. So for now, just ignore uh, all of this. Let's focus on this here. So this gets the node kinematic body 2d and well it, our kinematic body 2d is actually called wall um, so I just made a big mistake so if you were confused about that I'm really sorry and I hope that just made a bit more sense so what this does since by default the scope is here in collectible it has to move out and then move back into the node of choice uh, this is pretty similar to directory structure so I don't know if you've ever tried to use the terminal or anything, uh, if I um, you know go like cd downloads and then cd teamspeak, uh, you can see I'm currently in downloads slash teamspeak. And um, so if I do cd dot dot, I go to the previous folder. cd dot dot, I go to the previous folder. So if I want to go back into downloads for a second say that I want to come out of downloads and go back into documents I could do cd dot dot then cd documents however I could just do I could just uh, put it all onto one line and do cd dot dot slash documents and that's exactly how this works um, it did occur to me that this font is probably pretty small because I don't know the best video quality so I don't know if I can make this any bigger. Um, there we go. You can see it a little more clearly. A bit ugly. But, yeah, the point is this bit. The cd dot dot slash documents. And if I press this, I'm currently working within documents. I hope that didn't confuse anybody. If you're um, still not sure, you can leave a comment or something and I'll explain it slightly better in text. So, yeah, this... Default scope is collectible, moves out, moves back in to what? And it gets that node. Uh, one thing to note is that if it doesn't find a node, uh, or a node here, if I do ASDF and I press play, there we go. So I successfully broke the program. There we go. So let's let's put this back to wall. Um, Q3. Uh, what this method does is um, uh, it queues the object for being, well, deleted. It um, you, Godot automatically uh, frees up memory uh, to be used by other objects, and any object uses up a certain amount of memory while it's exist while it's in existence. So what this does, it queues, it puts this node into the queue, and that happens pretty much instantaneously because you know it's, a, it's computer, it's fast. Um, so that works. That's good. Uh, one other, th you can also do some other things here. If you remember, in the probably one of the e earlier times we did, something like set position, blah blah blah. You can actually call that, or all functions that you can call, like you know, move or get pause or whatever. You can call those all as methods. We can do get node dot set pause, and put it to vector two, five hundred five hundred, and this will do the exact same thing. Boop moves. There we go. Um. So yeah, there we go, that's, that's pretty cool. Oops. Um, okay. So yeah, one more thing to note is that if we move over this like, twice, it deletes it. If we move over it again, it freaks out. And if you remember, that's because we just removed this node, this wall node. Uh, so it's looking for... Oops. So if I can stop hitting my microphone... Uh, it would look for the wall node, try to call a function on it, then freak out because it can't find it. So, what we can actually do here is pretty simple. We'll just do something like uh, let's define a variable and call it var wall destroyed, then equal to false by default because obviously when we first start the game, the wall is not destroyed. It's a healthy wall. So, so now we can do an if statement if not wall destroyed destroy the wall 
else do nothing. In fact, we could just leave that blank. Um, so yeah, if the wall is not destroyed, destroy the wall. Otherwise, do nothing. Okay. Let's try this again. Wall's gone. Um, so the thing is here, I forgot to actually set wall destroyed to be true. Um, so now that I set it to be true, it should work. Hey, it works. There we go. Um, this is terrible, I'm sorry. But yeah, there we go. We did it. We did it. Um, that's really all there is to cover in this tutorial, so play around with this, see what else you can come up with, and uh, stay tuned for part 7, where we'll start delving into instancing uh, for real this time. I promise.